Milgram ran his study many times all around the world and got very similar results. Then eventually ethics boards were established and the whole thing got shut down. But we know from those studies a bunch of psychological principles. The status of the authority figure matters. If the experimenter was like Professor Bly in a white lab coat, they have more power over the participants than if they are casually dressed. Then there's the power of commitment. So you start by being helpful. At first, it's not a big deal. It may even be a novelty giving these light little shocks. Then gradually, the full horror of what you're doing starts to dawn on you. But where's the point when you turn around? Where's the point when you make a scene? Where's the point when you step back from your commitment? Humans find that difficult, so the absence of a clear-cut point in time to disobey is really important. The belief that the authority figure would take responsibility for actions is also a large factor. Of course, this is the Nazi war crime defence. It's not up to me. My morality is about following orders in a time of war. It's not about my own moral decision about whether I exterminate the Jews. This was seen in the experiment as well. The teachers didn't just mindlessly zap the learner. They were haggling with the experimenter. They were fighting with him. No, I can't do this. Let me go in there and see if the guy's okay. I don't feel good about this. I think the guy needs help. And the experimenter would say all of these stern but meaningless things like, the experiment demands that you continue. You must continue the experiment. And people are like, no way, I don't want to. I feel really uncomfortable. The one thing that the experimenter would say, which is quite successful in getting them to continue, would be, it's not your responsibility what happens to that man. That's my responsibility. Your responsibility is to do the experiment. Then quite often, in great distress, people would turn around and continue to be complicit in the potential murder of a stranger. We know, of course, that if there's barriers to empathy, people are more likely to do this kind of stuff. In the original study, you couldn't hear the learner screaming out and begging. In some later versions of this study, the teacher could hear the learner screaming out. They'd be saying, let me out of here, let me out of here, my heart hurts, let me out. They'd be screaming when they get the shock, and then gradually the screams start to turn to grunts and then the begging dies out as the shocks increase. And then you don't hear them begging to be released anymore. And it gets to the point where you can't even hear them, and they're not responding to the questions. There's just this eerie silence in the room, the clear implication being that they're dead or unconscious. In that circumstance, you get less obedience, but it's still about 60%. That's still very high. In some of the studies, they got actors to pretend to get the shock right in front of you in the room, and then the obedience went down to 40%. Then in some of the studies, they actually had to wrestle with the person and force their hand onto the electric pad. And then only 30% of people went all the way. But that's still 30%. This is human nature. Of course, if the consequences of your actions are in your face and you can see the pain, you're less likely to follow those orders. But the numbers are still incredibly high.